In this video, what I want to do is go over how to find the vertical, the horizontal, the slant, the X, and the Y intercept of rational expressions. And I'm going to do that by working through six different examples. And I'm going to kind of do this relatively quickly, just assuming that you have a basic idea of how to find those intercepts um, as well as the um, asymptotes. So therefore, we can just kind of cover a lot of different examples. But I will work through them, and I will kind of show my work here step by step so you have an understanding of how to identify those asymptotes and intercepts. So let's go ahead and get started with the first example, which is going to be y equals a negative 3 all over ax plus 2. Now, the first thing we always want to do is see if we can simplify this, but there's nothing really to simplify here. So now what I'm going to do to find the vertical asymptote, I'm just going to set my denominator equal to 0 and solve. So x is going to equal to a negative 2. To find my horizontal asymptote here, um, all I'm going to do is now compare the degrees in the numerator and the denominator. A lot of students get confused here when there's nothing in this numerator, so therefore I'm going to rewrite that as an x to the 0, because that's going to be the power of that degree, and this is going to be x to the first power. Now, whenever the degree in the denominator is larger than the degree in the numerator, then my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. To find the x-intercepts, the fastest, the easiest way to be able to do that is just set your numerator equal to zero, okay? Because basically what we're doing is we're setting y equal to zero, and then we're multiplying the denominator on both sides. Either way, you're gonna get zero is equal to a negative three, which again is going to be a false statement, so therefore there are no x-intercepts. That graph does not cross the x-intercept. Then what we're gonna do is now look at the y-intercepts. Now the y-intercept, all you're simply gonna do is take the constant over the constant. Now if you don't have a constant, again, kind of like how I added x to the zero here, I could also just put a zero over in this case. So therefore, that's going to be y is equal to a zero over two, which is just going to equal to a zero. All right, let's go and take a look at another example. Um, in this case, I have y is equal to a x all over a x squared minus a four. Now again, you could factor the x squared minus four, right? You could rewrite this as a um, x minus two times an x plus two. But again, nothing is gonna like simplify um, out from here. So therefore, um, to find my vertical asymptotes, again, I'm just going to set my denominator, x minus 2 times x plus 2 equal to 0. So therefore, I can say x minus 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 0. And then hopefully you recognize by applying the zero product property, what you'll get is a um, x minus 2 is equal to 0 and an x plus 2, right, is equal to 0. So therefore, you get x is equal to 2 and x is equal to a negative 2. I guess I just might as well show a little bit more work, right? All right, for horizontal asymptote, again, notice that the degree in the numerator is 1, the degree in the denominator is 2, so therefore, since the degree in the denominator is larger than the degree in the numerator, um, I'm going to have a y equals 0 is my horizontal asymptote. For my um, x-intercept, well, now I'm just going to set my numerator equal to 0. Well, this one's kind of easy. <laughs> x equals 0. Done. <laughs> for the y-intercept, Again, we got to go back and do the intercept over the intercept. And again, you can just rewrite this as a plus zero. Actually, not like plus zero over here. Let's write the plus zero over here. So therefore, it's zero over a negative four, which again is just going to be a zero. Don't worry. We're going to get to some more examples. We have six examples that we're going to cover. All right, so let's go and take a look at another one. And again, you wanted some factoring. So here you go. You get some factoring. So y, in this case, is y is equal to an x squared plus 2x plus 1 all over an x. Okay, so in this case, we can definitely factor here this trinomial. Um, this is going to be a perfect square trinomial, so you can rewrite this as an x plus 1 times x plus 1, or you could just write that as an x plus 1 quantity squared all over x. Again, nothing is going to simplify or divide out. So for my vertical asymptote, setting the denominator equal to 0, that equals an x equals 0. For my horizontal asymptote, Notice now the degree in my denominator is less than the degree in my numerator, so therefore I do not have a horizontal asymptote. I now have a slant asymptote. So how do you find the slant asymptote? To find the slant asymptote, you need to apply um, your synthetic division. I'm sorry, not synthetic division, long division. So all we're simply going to do is I'm going to take my denominator, which is x, and I'm going to divide that into my numerator. So I get an x squared plus a 2x plus 1. So x divides into x squared, let's say x times, x times x is going to be an x squared. Um, and then you can bring everything down, you know, subtract everything, and you get a, let's say a 2x plus 1. x divides into 2x plus 2 times, okay? So guess what? y equals 2x, you're just going to take that um, uh, quotient of your long division, and that is going to be your slant asymptote. Now to find the x-intercept, again, you're going to take your numerator equal to 0. So 0 equals a x plus 1 right? Quantity squared. You can take the square root of both sides. So therefore, you get a 0 equals an x plus 1. 
and therefore x is equal to a negative one. And done from there. Um, to find the y-intercept, now here, my denominator doesn't have a constant, so let's put a zero here. Now one divided by zero, mm -mm, that's not gonna work. So guess what? That's undefined. Therefore, you do not have a y-intercept in this example. This graph does not cross the y-intercept. All right, let's go and take a look at another example. So in this case, I have uh, equation number four. I have y is equal to a 3x plus our 3x squared plus 4 divided by an x plus 1. And let me go and see. Yeah, I should. I'll see if I know if work. Um, okay, so to find my vertical asymptote, I'm just going to set my denominator equal to 0, right? x plus 1 equals 0, so x is equal to a negative 1. Um, to find my horizontal asymptote, again, notice that my numerator is smaller, or my degree of my numerator is smaller, uh, or sorry, is larger than the degree of my denominator, right? So I don't have a horizontal asymptote, but to find my slant asymptote, again, let's go back to that long division. So what I'll do is here, I'll take an x plus 1, since I have a little rim, I'll do it up top here, divides into a 3x squared plus 4. All right, now actually, since we're doing long division, I'm actually going to use a place value of 0x plus 4. Okay, you don't need to do this, but sometimes when students struggle, which is a lot of students struggle with um, long division, I like to kind of use my place values. Okay, so x divides into 3x squared. That's going to be a 3x times. 3x times x is going to be a 3x squared. 3x times 1 is going to be a positive 3x. So you can see the place value is coming helpful, handy in here, because now I have something to subtract the 3x from. So 0 minus a 3x is a negative 3x. X divides into a negative 3x, negative 3 times. And again, now this is just going to give me a remainder, so I don't need to worry about anything else from here. But that is now going to be my slant asymptote, which is a y equals a 3x. I don't know why I did that. A 3x minus 3. All right, so now let's go and get into my x-intercept. <sighs> to find my x-intercept, um, that's going to set my numerator to the 0, right? So 3x squared, let's look at 3x squared plus 4 equals 0. Well, let's subtract the 4 on both sides. 3x squared equals a negative 4. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter, like, if you divide by the 3 or not. Like, I mean, I guess you can show it. But again, like the point I want you to make is x squared equals a negative four thirds. What happens when you're trying to take the square root of a negative number, right? It's not going to work, right? So there are no x-intercepts, right? No x-intercepts. So you can simplify that with imaginary numbers, but again, we're looking for real x-intercepts. So you have to have real numbers. Um, for my y-intercept, that's just going to be constant over constant, right? Because all the x's are going to go to zero. So therefore, that's going to be a y is equal to a four over one, which is just four. All right, let's go and take a look at another example here. Um, for number five, I have a, um, in this case, I have y equals a 2x squared plus an 8x plus 4 divided by a x squared plus a 4x plus 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor this. And actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put this over here. Let's kind of do a little arrow. Kind of go from there. Just give myself a little bit more space. All right, so over here I can factor out a 2, right? So by factoring out a 2, I'm going to be left with a x squared plus a 4x plus 2. All right, and that's not going to be factorable, so we're going to have an issue there. This one is not going to be factorable as well. Great. <laughs> so this one's going to be an x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, so... What that means is for the vertical asymptotes, let's set my denominator equal to zero. So I have an x squared plus a 4x plus one is equal to zero. Now, again, I said it's not factorable, like I'm assuming it's not factorable. So let's go ahead and again, use our quadratic formula here to solve. Like we could have, it could be not factorable across rational numbers, or it could be not factorable across real numbers. Like we need to be able to figure this out. So now we need to use my, um, use the quadratic formula to be able to identify. So x is gonna equal opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of a b squared minus a 4 times a times c. That's all over a 2 times a. All right, so that's going to be 16 minus 4. Um, that's going to be 12, so okay, that's still going to work. And you know what? Let me, um, let me actually add an extra page here. So add a page there. There we go. All right, so therefore, I'll just have a little bit more room because I'm probably going to need it. Okay, um, so therefore, x is going to equal 
you can actually know what I'll do here now is I'm just going to move this, all of this down. So I don't feel like everything's being smushed because that's kind of like where I was getting at from before. So let me actually move this around. There we go. Okay. Um, all right. So now we have X is going to equal to a negative four plus or minus. This is going to be what? 12 divided by two. Now remember the square root of 12, right? You can break that down into um, square root of 12. You can break that down into two times radical three. So X is equal to a negative four plus or minus a um, two radical three all over two X equals a negative two plus or minus a square root of three. So I just dividing that two into both of those terms. Um, those are not going to be nice, but if you needed to graph this, you could just find like the decimal version to be able to do that. All right. Hopefully the horizontal asymptotes a little bit easier and it is. Okay. So what I want you to recognize here for the horizontal asymptote, whenever you have your degrees are equal to each other, you're just going to take leading coefficient over leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient here of an X squared is just one. So I'm not going to say Y is equal to a two over one which is just equal to a two. No, way easier than the vertical asymptotes. All right, what about x-intercept? Dang it, remember the x-intercept here? This was, uh, this is not factorable, right? So you set your zero, um, your numerator equal to this. So two times an x squared plus four x plus two. Now you don't really need to keep this two here because what's gonna happen guys, you, the first thing you're gonna do is divide by two anyways, right? So zero equals a x squared plus four x plus two. Um, and again, I'm not seeing that's factorable. So I got to go back to using my quadratic formula. So X is equal to opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus a four times a times a C, which in this case is two. Um, maybe it is negative eight. No, it's gonna be an eight. Okay. And that's gonna be all divided by two times one. All right. So in this case, I have X equals a negative four plus or minus. That's gonna be 16 minus eight. So that's gonna be an eight divided by two. And remember, eight can be simplified down to two square root of two. So this would be x equals a negative four plus or minus a two radical two over two. Divide the twos in both of those cases. Therefore, that's a negative two plus or minus <clears throat> a square root of two. So those are going to be my x-intercepts. Whew, quite a bit of work. All right, so what about my y-intercepts? Please, let's make this easy. Please, please, please. Um, for the y-intercept, remember, you're just taking constant over constant. Well, that's nice. That's four over one. That's y is equal to four. Whew. Some of these can be really easy. Sometimes they can be really tricky. Um, all right, let's go and take a look at um, a next example. So that, in this case, I'll have y is equal to a x squared or a three x squared um, plus one. And what else did I write up there? Three x squared plus one and a two x squared minus three x plus one. So a two x squared minus three X plus one. Okay. Now in this one, I can't really factor my numerator, but I do want to be able to see if I can factor out my denominator. So I'm going to leave my numerator the way it is. And then in this case, um, actually, um, in this case, actually that's no, that's supposed to be minus one. All right. Let's see what we can factor here. Let's see if I can factor this into a product of two binomials. Cause I don't believe I had that right. I didn't have, yeah, that was one undefined. Yeah, that was supposed to be negative. Okay. All right. Um, so on this one, um, I think this would be minus one and minus one, right? Because if I did a two X and X, right? And then I want to multiply this by negative one and multiply this by negative one. So two X times negative one is a negative two X. That'd be negative X. That's a negative three X. That would work. Perfect. Okay. Um, now nothing is going to divide out in this case. Um, actually, you know what? Yeah. Cause we have the X squared and the X squared. Okay. Oh no, no. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, that was not supposed to be there. I wanted that hole to be there. The vertical asymptotes. Right. Yeah. Because that's what I wanted in this case. That was supposed to be, Oh, these are all getting messed up. Sorry about that. I messed up this whole problem. So that's an X squared minus one. Yeah. Because I wanted a hole because what I wanted to have in this problem, which I must've written down wrong, was I wanted to have a hole because we can't always have vertical asymptotes. So when you actually simplify this one out, that's going to be an X minus one times an X plus one. The reason why this is important because these X minus ones divide out. So when you're trying to identify the vertical asymptotes, don't get caught by having a hole here. Okay. What you're going to want to do in this case is 
what you're going to want to do in this case is set not just the not the whole denominator equal to zero, but only what could not be simplified out, right? Because this gets simplified to an x plus one all over a two x minus one. So this is what you're going to call your non-removable discontinuity. That is the only thing that can be your vertical asymptote. All right. So therefore, you add one, divide by two. So x is equal to a one half. So then, what do you mean about the x minus one? What was that? That was a whole. Okay. So x minus one equal to zero. So X is equal to a one. So if it gets divided out, it's a whole. If it can't be divided out, it's a horizontal asymptote. Um, oh, I'm sorry, a vertical asymptote. Now let's go and look at the horizontal asymptote. Um, again, in this case, what we're going to have is going to be a um, numerator over, or I'm sorry, the, um, the powers are exactly the same. So it's leading coefficient over leading coefficient. So Y is equal to a one half. Um, to find my x-intercept, I'm going to take a x squared minus 1 equal to 0, add 1, divide by 2, x is going to equal to a plus or minus 1. And then for my denominator, or sorry, for my y-intercept, I'm just going to take a negative 1 over a positive 1. So y is equal to a negative 1 over a positive 1. So y is going to equal to a negative 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.